be a practitioner. I get a lot of accolades, yeah, Gary, I, why do you think I do all this content? So I do it. I built my personal brand, not necessarily for the brand halo effect, to keep me in check to always be on top of shit. I'm in the green room right now, tweeting and texting and consuming and creating content. I'm putting in work, every day, work. And I know the nuances of a filter and a geolocation and the copy of a Facebook post. Like, everybody's talking about this stuff doesn't work. No, no, you don't work. So if you have ambition, if you, if you fucking came to this conference, you clearly want something. So if that's the case, how do you not have 30 hours to go do research on how to do this shit for real? I'll give you a free resource on how to post ads on Facebook, how to find influencers on Instagram, how to do Snapchat better, how to do LinkedIn better. I'm gonna give you a free resource right now. You guys ready? Here it is. G-O-O-G-L-E. You want something? Go fucking get it. It's called search engines. How do I post better on Instagram? Enter. The amount of people talking big game in this office, in this room, office, <laughs> clearly I use that a lot. The amount of people talking big game at this conference right now where their ambitions don't match their actions. You know how many people roll around here and say they're gonna make a hundred million a year and then take the whole weekend off and they have nothing going for themselves yet? Do you know how quiet my head is? Do you know how quiet my head is? My head is super, it is super quiet in here. You know why? No voices allowed. No voices allowed. Not my wife's, not my kids, not my business partners, not my parents, nobody. I'm in it for me, in my own mind. The reason I can give so much to everybody else is because I'm good, because I'm in it with myself, period. End of story. And I've been talking about a lot of things and the reason I'm going further down this rabbit hole of tune out everybody else is as I've gotten to know people, I'm like, oh, they're scared because their partner makes fun of them all the time. Like it's just, it's just very basic behavior. Right? It's very basic behavior. And so I just don't want that for you anymore. Like, has anybody realized, guys, it's 400 trillion to one. The odds of being in this fucking room right now is 400 trillion to one. The fact that your mom and dad had sex at that exact second to create you is fucking insane. Eating shit for a decade and doing it for yourself is a good one for you. In that eating shit decade, if you actually get smart, and stop fucking judging every new thing that comes along. And you know what's so funny to me? What's so funny to me is people that get fancy. Let me end with this, fancy. Fancy fucking excites the shit out of me. The amount of people that aren't where they want to be and say, well, I don't have time for Facebook. I don't have time to learn another app like Snapchat. Yet, you're not winning. Get him, my man. I don't understand. You're not where you're at. You'd rather spend thousands of dollars on dumb shit to somebody teaching you some fucking secret that doesn't exist than you spending the 40 hours to learn the newest thing, even if it dies. Let me tell you the story about Social Camp. Social Camp came out six years ago. I spent fucking 50, 60, 100 hours on it figuring it out, right? That's what I did. It worked for about four months and then the whole thing collapsed and nobody gave a fuck about social cam. Waste of time or in those learnings on a mobile first video platform did I learn what made me bet on Vine? Number two, I bet on Vine, Vine comes out. Everybody's like, who gives a fuck, six seconds video, stupid. I'm like, not me, I'm gonna learn everything about this. I'm gonna be friends with everybody. What happens with Vine? Does pretty good. I get a, I start an agency representing a bunch of talent with Jerome Jar. We make a couple bucks, but I learn, I learn, I learn. What happens with Vine? Dies. But what happens next? Instagram video. And what happens in the last year for me on Instagram video? The last four years of me learning mobile first video dynamics on two things I wasted my time on, even though I had hundreds of millions of dollars, I wasn't too fucking fancy to put in the work at two o'clock in the morning because I'm fucking hungry and I back it the fuck up. We are making excuses and we do it every day because it feels a lot better to shit on somebody else than look at yourself and shit on yourself. By the way, 
this one man's point of view. I don't look at anybody else. I have no fucking idea what you guys are up to. And I shit on myself every day. I critique everything I do. Everything is my fault. Period, end of story. I can sit and dwell on all the things. Somebody hits me with a fucking car tomorrow. I'm like, fuck, I shouldn't have left the house that early. (laughs) You get into that fucking mindset, I promise you shit changes. You need to fucking suffocate your bullshit. You're at this conference, that means you need to suffocate your bullshit, period. You either need to figure out who's holding you back and their judgment and go to them. I want you to get out of this fucking conference, go to your car, call your mom and say, fuck you. (laughs) If, if she's the person that is suppressing you because she's miserable and misery loves company. I'm being dead serious with you. I understand it's not a popular thing to say. I understand, but there's only a couple things that I'm seeing in the world today, which is people aren't doing things because they're fearful of other people's judgments, which usually comes from parenting or environment or circumstance, and they're still keeping negative energy around them because they're obligated, and I get it. I have negative people in my life too that I keep around as well, but to let that dictate your only life is fucking ludicrous. My friends, I'm being serious, I know it's funny, but I'm flabbergasted by people hitting me up. Gary, how do I get a, you know, I, I wanna apply for, I, I saw you met, literally this, email, this snap on the way to this, this, Gary, I saw you hiring content creators. How do I do that? I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? You wouldn't think of this Come, asshole. And you apply, I mean like, why do we need, you have to self-start. You have to self-start. If you believe like I do, that mobile devices have the consumer's attention and that Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, YouTube, podcasts have the percentage of time. And by the way, this is not a debate, this is data. They own it. Besides games and utility, it's social networks. You may not like it, you may not like that your teenage girl duck faces 24 hours a day. It doesn't matter because I've got news for you. Your 44 year old sister's duck facing too. It's 2017. What do you think's coming next? Are you ready for augmented reality? Are you ready for machine learning, for AI, for messengers, for VR? I mean, look, how many people here are retiring within the next 10 years? And I don't mean you're gonna crush it and buy a fucking island. I mean you're old and you're fucking finished. (laughs) Raise your hand if you're retiring in 10 years. Understood. Okay, for the 21 of you, you can take some of this with some level of grain of salt, but for the rest of you, everything I believe in, everything that is converting and creating your business opportunities in today's world did not exist 12 years ago. And all I know, let me actually, you know what? I'm gonna give you a real weird one. I want every person to do me a huge favor. If you really wanna know what's running through my fucking body, go volunteer at a nursing home for one day. Go volunteer at a nursing home for one day. Number one, it's just a nice thing to do and you'll probably feel pretty awesome about it. Number two, go talk to eight people. Six, four. You're gonna see something that is gonna scare the living shit out of you. It's called regret. Regret scares the shit out of me. Regret is the fuel besides gratitude that drives my life. You will see people and they will tell you things about the things they didn't do and the silliness to why they didn't do it and they're running out of time. You sit in this room and you have time. You have time if you're 70, 80, 90, you have time if you're 15, you have time. But to sit and list all the reasons you can't, it's just, here's how I look at it. If anybody that looks like you has ever done it, then you can too. If, you know, if some kid that grew up with two alcoholic parents, right, and grew up in in an orphanage, made it, you can too. It's not necessarily that I don't believe in luck or circumstance, I believe in all of that. I really, I understand that. This is not about that, it's about mindset. The second you start having losing mindset, you've already fucking lost. I love when people think shit like the secret is real. It's not fucking real. Here's how it works, friends. If you actually are optimistic and you make a goal and your actions map to it, you miraculously get somewhere close to it. It's not sitting on your couch jerking off and saying, I wish I had a million dollars. And we are wasting it away 
and I just don't want you to do that. Mainly, because I get a high off of the email that you sent me in six years about this suffocating conversation. Content and distribution. Content and distribution. You have to make stuff, figure out what kind of content producer you are. Are you good at writing? Are you good at talking? Are you good in front of video? Everybody thinks, oh, video's the answer. Video's not the answer if you suck on video. (laughs) Can you talk, can you write, are you charismatic in front of a camera? All three are tried and true. Video, written word, audio, they play forever. Figure out which one you're good at and go deep into that. Everybody's trying to make you fix all your shortcomings, fuck your shortcomings. Triple down on your strengths. It is your biggest advantage, period. Leave this conference, figure out first what you want to sell. Actually, before that, figure out what you want your life to be. Do you really want all that money? Do you really want all that money? What do you want? Figure that out. Then figure out what you want to sell. Your time, your service, a product, I don't care, a festival, but figure out something you believe in that you sell. And then finally, number three, figure out how to let the world know about it at the lowest possible cost. Today, if it's under 30 year olds, that's Instagram influencers and Snapchat ads, they're $3 CPMs. Everybody writes off Snapchat because Instagram copies all its features. That's exactly when I went all in on Snapchat the last three months and I'm buying awareness at a price I've never seen before if the person's under 30, all of it. Not Facebook, not smartphones, not YouTube, not Snapchat, none of it. What do you think happens now? Can you imagine if I told you 10 years ago that you would prefer your teenage girl to take a drive with a stranger than drive herself? Would you believe that? We are living through massive social norm changes. Remember how weird it was to online date? Not so much anymore. We are living through massive human shifts. This is the biggest culture shift since the printing press. The internet is only roughly 20 years old in being a consumer product for all of us. This is just starting and the level of disrespect or the level of, ah, it's kind of something. The unbelievable nature of you not becoming ridiculously educated in this shit blows my mind. You cannot have the audacity for ambition in the future world without putting in hundreds of hours of homework to the nuances of how to create communications and distribute them on this device. Your ass out if you don't do it and I don't want outsourcing to nieces, and I don't want fucking bullshit excuses, and I don't want to hear that you're not good on camera, then fucking write, Rick. I don't care. (laughs) But you need to fucking make a decision today. Are you gonna allow yourself to buy bullshit programs for the rest of your life and come to shit like this, or are you gonna finally fucking eat shit and do something about it? (laughs) Are you gonna fucking pretend Are you gonna make pretend you're a business person because it feels nice, or are you gonna become a business person? Paying your big to look the part is a great business for other people. This is something that I don't want 15 years later. We still walk on the street talking about why and how e-commerce can help people. Talk about the IPO, did it exceed your expectations? Well, it's a pretty small IPO. 250. Yes. Yeah, the largest IPO two. in the history of Wall Street. Of <laughs> we raised, we, yeah, we and raised. number two was a Chinese bank. Thank you. I, I, uh, I remember year 2001, we went to uh, raise some uh, five million, three million venture capitalist dollars in the USA and got rejected. And I say we'll come back raising some a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> but I, uh, I think, you know, what we think more about is for $25 billion, how we can spend the money efficiently. Because this is not the money, this is the trust from the world, the trust from those people. They want you to do better jobs, to help more people. They want to have a good return. So I think it uh, gives me more pressure because um, when our, our market cap, is bigger than IBM. Or certain day we're bigger than Walmart. We're one of the top 10, 15 largest market cap company in the world. I told my team and myself, is that true? We're not that good. Because years ago, people say, oh, Alibaba model is terrible. 
does not make money, have this and that, all the big bad things because Amazon is better, eBay is better, Google is better. And there's no such model like Alibaba in the USA. So I told myself and people, we were better than people thought. But today, when we are that big size, I said, no, we are not that good as people thought. We're just a company, 15 years old. Average age is 27, 28 years old, young people. We're doing something that human beings have never tried. So I want, I want to talk about the future. Let me take you back uh, to when you were born in Hangzhou, uh, where the headquarters still are. Yeah. Uh, and your campus is there. You don't have a loot. Don't, don't move your loot. Your headquarters your there. there. Yeah. You found it there. Loot there. You grew up in the 60s. 64. <laughs> Born in 64. That was the time of the Cultural Revolution. Yeah, it was the end of the Cultural Revolution. It was, uh, well, my grandfather was uh, a tiny landlord, was considered, after liberation, was considered to be a bad guy. So um, <clears throat> I was, um, I, 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 I know how tough it was uh, when I was a kid. You tried to get into three colleges each time they rejected you? No, I, I tried, there is an examination that young people, if you want to go to university, you have to taste, take the examinations. So I failed three times. Right. But I had a lot of fail. I failed for funny things that I failed a key primary school test for two times. And I failed uh, um, like a two, three times for the middle school, middle schools. And uh, you, you will never believe in, in Hangzhou, my city, there's only one middle school that lasts only one year. It was changed from primary school to middle school because our graduates of our, our, our school, no, university, you, no middle school accept us because we were too bad. <laughs> so I've been using that for that many years. Yeah. <laughs> uh, first visit to America, 1995? 1995. Yeah, I, uh, I've come here for a project helping the local government to building up a highway. Uh, and you tried the internet? I tried the internet in Seattle and um, in a building called the U.S. Bank. I don't know whether the U.S. Bank is still there or not, but it's a building. And uh, this, my friend opened a small office, which is like a only 10% bigger than this room. And there are a lot of much computers in there. And he said, Jack, you, this is internet. Was I asked, what is internet? He said, you know, search whatever you want. At that time, they used Mosaic, very slow. And I said, I don't use it. I don't want to type because internet computer is so expensive in China. If I destroy it, I cannot pay. He said, just to search it. So I searched the first word of beer. <laughs> I don't know why, because it's easy to spell, baby. <laughs> and I see beers from Germany, beers from USA, beers from uh, uh, Japan, but there's no beer from China. And I say, okay, type the second word is China. No data. Nothing. Nothing. And I say, 1995. 1995. No data about China. So I talked to my friend. Why not make some something about China? So we made uh, a small, very ugly looking page called China, it's, it's, about, it's something like I did a translation agency and we listed on there. It was so shocking. We launched at 9.40 in the morning. 12.30, I got a phone call from my friend. He said, Jack, you know, you got five emails. I said, what is email? <laughs> and they said, these are the things. So people are so excited. Where are you? This is the first time I see a Chinese website on that. How can we kind of win? Can we do something together? So I think this is something interesting. So we should do it. Why did you call it Alibaba? Alibaba? Well, when I started, I think internet is global. We should have a global name. And a name that um, interesting, like at that time, the best name is Yahoo. Right, I think I can. So I've been thinking for many days. Suddenly, think Alibaba is a good name. So I, I was happened to be in San, San Francisco that day. I have a, have a lunch, and the waitress come. I asked her, "Do you know about Alibaba?" She said, "Yes." I said, "What is Alibaba?" She said, "Open Sesame." Good. So I went on the street, asked about 10, 20 people. 
they all know about Alibaba, 40 Seeds and uh, Open Sesame, and I think this is a good name. And start with A, whatever you talk about, Alibaba is always top. But um, I was coming for year 2001 for the Young Global Leader for Tomorrow. And I think, remember, I never heard about the Davos when I came. But when I came, I, uh, I, I in Switzerland, so many young people demonstrate. It was such a horrible thing that I was, and, and I asked them, why did they do it? They say, anti-globalization. And I say, why globalization is a great thing? Why people end? You know, don't like it. <laughs> and then we come all the way for two hours here. There's a machine gun. There's people checking us. Say, oh God, is that, is that a fallen or is that prison? We're going to go inside. <laughs> but when I joined the fallen uh, as the young global leader, I was thrilled by uh, so many ideas. For the first three, four years, I learned what, what, does, what does the globalization mean? What does the corporate citizenship mean? What about social responsibility mean? And all these new ideas. And I see so many great leaders talking about leadership. And I benefit a lot. In the year 2008 and 2009, <clears throat> when the financial crisis came, I think it's better go back to work. Because we can never win the world by talking. So go back, spend seven years. Now I come back, I think it's time to do something return. So I learned so much Let's talk 12 about years that. ago. So why I should not talk to the young global leader of today, sharing with them how we gone through. That was the thing. Let's start with where you are today. Just how big is Alibaba? How many people come every day? How many people come in a week? How fast is it growing? Yeah, we have uh, over 100 million buyers visiting our site, shopping our site um, every day. And we created... 100 uh, million, million every day. We created um, uh, 14 million jobs for China directly and indirectly. <clears throat> and um, we grow from 18 people to 30,000 people, 18 people in my apartment, to now we have four big campers. Compared to 15 years ago, we were big, but compared to 15 years later, we're still a baby. <laughs> How big will you be 15 years from now? I think 15 years ago, I told my team that um, 15 years, in the past 15 years, we grow from nothing to this size. And 15 years later, I want people to see no about Alibaba, no Taobao, because it's already everywhere. I want, 15 years ago, when we talk about what is e-commerce, why small business can use this e-commerce, this internet, can do business across the nation. And I hope 15 years later, people forget about e-commerce because they think it's like electricity. Nobody thinks it's a high tech today. <laughs> they will become a middle school. <laughs> what effect did it have, though, uh, being rejected? Well, I think we have to get used to it. We're not that good. Even today, we still have a lot of people reject us. I think um, when I uh, in the, graduated from universities, and before I, you know, for three years, I tried to fill in the universities. So I applied jobs for 30 times, got rejected. I went for a police, they said, no, you're not good. I went to you know, even the uh, KFC. When KFC came to China, come to my city, <laughs> 20, 24 people went for the job. 23 people were accepted. I was the only one guy. <laughs> and we went for police. Five people, four of them accepted. I was the only guy that I received, received it. So to me, being turned down, rejected, Oh, by the way, I told you that I, would, I applied for Harvard for 10 times rejected. <laughs> I know I'll be rejected. Yeah, sorry I just now. want to say that. Yeah, sorry now. <laughs> 10 times you wrote them and said, I'd like to come to Harvard. Yeah. And then I told myself, someday I should go teach there, baby. <laughs> I, I, I think that can be arranged. Um, Richard Nixon came to Hangzhou. Yeah. And after that, tourists flooded the place. Yeah. 
and that's how you learn English. Yeah. I really like the, I don't know why, at 12, 13 years old, that time I suddenly fell in love into the language, the English. And there's no place you can, you can learn English at that time. There's no books, English books. So I went to the uh, Hangzhou Hotel, now called Hangzhou Shangri-La Hotel, because that was the hotel I uh, can receive the foreign visitors. So every morning for nine years, I showed them around as a free guide, and they taught me English. And uh, I think that changed me. Today, I'm 100% made in China. I've never got a one-day train outside China. And uh, people, when people talk to me, say, Jack, how can you speak English like that? Why sometimes you, you talk like an American, Western guys? I think that was the nine years. These Western foreign tourists opened my mind because everything they told me are so different from the things I learned from the schools and from my parents. So now I have a habit. Whatever I see, whatever I read, I use my mind think about it for two days. Is that how Ma Jun became Jack Ma? Actually, Jack, the name was given by uh, a, a, a lady in tennis. She's a tourist. She came here and she said, we came to Hangzhou. We had a, we become a pen friends. Ma Ring is so difficult to pronounce. So she said, do you, do you have an English name? I said, don't. So can you give me an English name? She said, uh, okay. She said, my father called the Jack, my husband called Jack. What do you think about Jack? I said, good. <laughs> you have said before that in creating Alibaba, you had to create trust. Yep. Uh, because people in China were used to face to face. Yeah. How did you create trust? I think uh, because we started about that doing business on the internet. I don't know you, you don't know me. So how can you do things online unless you have trust? So for e-commerce, the most important thing was trust. I think when I went, first went to USA for raising money, talked to the venture capitalists, a lot of people say, oh, Jack, no, 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 no. China doing business by the guanxi. How can you do business on the internet? And I know that without the trust system, the credit system, it's impossible to do business. So we, we every, in the past four, 14 years, everything we do is trying to build up the trust system, the record system. Well, uh, Charlie, you know, I, I, I'm so proud of today. When I, I talk to young, today in China and in the world, people don't trust each other. The government and people and the media and everybody think, ah, this guy's cheating. But because of e-commerce, we finish 60 million transactions every day. People don't know each other. I don't know you, I send products to you. You don't know me, you wire the money to me. And I don't know you, I give a pers person a package. I don't know him. He took something to so cross the ocean, cross the river, and said, this is the trust. We have six, at least a 60 million trust happening every day. But you created it by creating an escrow account in the beginning. Yep. You know, and so you keep the money until they got the product. Yeah. Then you release them. That's true. I mean, the escrow service is about Alipay. When I, when I, when I, ha you know, this idea with the love doubles, because it was a big decision. Because for first three years, Alibaba is just like e marketplaces for, for information. Uh, what you have, what I have, we talk a lot of time, but don't do any business because there is no payment. I talk to the banks, no banks want to do it. Banks say, ah, oh, no, this thing never work. So I don't know what to do because if I start to launch a payment system, it's against the financial legal laws because you have to have a license. But if I don't do it, e-commerce will go nowhere. So then I went to Davos, I listened to a leadership discussion. Leadership is about responsibility. And after I listen to that panel, I give a call to my friends, my colleagues in the, my apartment saying, do it now, immediately. If something wrong, the government not happy about that, if one body has to go to the prison, Jack might go to the prison.